Hey folks, it's Samantha once again. Welcome back to another video. Sorry if there was a weird start, just making sure if everything's working all right on this webcam. But still continuing the John Candy Marathon. I know a lot of people don't like it because I've lost about, oh, I don't know, 10 subscribers so far as I started doing these reviews. But you know what? I'm going to keep doing it because I enjoyed John Candy and the guy was great and he deserves something. Grand. This is nothing, but hey, it's my channel. Do what I want. But speaking of which, a while ago I had gotten a message from a guy named Danny Marianino. I have said his last name wrong, and he had messaged me about how he he had liked some of the stuff I had done, and he wanted me to look at a book for him, a book that he wrote. And I said, okay, I mean, I don't really review books too much, but he's like, well, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. And sometimes I go around YouTube and people who seem like they've seen the movies I've seen, you know, just give some thoughts to it. So message him back. He sent this for free, this book. The Mega Book of Revenge, Volume 1, The Big Payback. Uncaught and Awesome. Forward by Josh Schaefer, who runs Lunch Meat Magazine, which deals a lot with uh, VHS, especially VHS horror films. And again, I rarely review books, so this is going to be kind of weird and different. Now I believe you can get this on Amazon for about 15 bucks, give or take. But again, he sent it to me for free. He even wrote this. Very cool one to do. It says, hey Matt, I hope you enjoy the book and find a few films you may never have heard of. The best. Wishing you the best. So that was very kind of him to do. So I mean, only fair that I do it. Now... Pretty much this, as you see, is a volume one. He's worked on others, and it deals with all sorts of revenge type of movies. Some movies are strictly, you would label as revenge films, and also just revenge aspects in other movies. For example, Star Trek II gets a mention, because it's the Wrath of Khan. You know, Khan wants revenge. Uh, comedies, like Dirty Work or horror films like Nightmare on Elm Street where Freddy wants revenge on people who killed him and Christine and Mania Cop and many other films get mentioned in this. Now first and foremost the book is about 290 pages which is a nice poster for Day of the Dead. The rest are Index of Films, which is nice. You have the page number, which people are like, what does that matter? There have been books I've read that don't even list the page number. They just go, these are the films I talked about. We don't have a page number, but... And you know what? Any guy that has this at the end, you know, Jackson from Bloodsport with a two thumbs up, it's pretty cool. And that tells about his second book coming out. And of course it's called Gleam in the Cube. But I'm like, you mean with Christian Slater? That Gleam in the Cube? If so, I mean, there is revenge in that. Because it's about his brother, his uh, sort of foster Asian brother being murdered. And he's got to go kick some ass on the steel board. I reviewed that film. I love that movie. But it's 290 pages, has quite a few pictures, uh, mainly of posters, of films. People may wonder, well, why is it black and white? Well, it's just less expensive to have it. If it was in color, it would be much more expensive to do. And he even talked about how he, he had no big company behind this. He started his own company. In order to release this, he's sort of his own independent project. 
so hey I've never written a book I won't even know where to start to write in a book so I definitely congratulate him on that but at the same time people may go oh you're just kissing his ass because he gave you a free book no it's just it's kinda of hard to be you know it's a book that was easy to read and went at a quick pace a lot of great posters like this here. A lot of cool stuff if you're into any elements of the revenge genre. It feels like it's from a guy who really loves the genre. And I will say the reviews sometimes are a bit short. If you're going into this wondering if it's going to have any in-depth or thought-provoking, or really bits of trivia, juicy trivia, or huge amounts of deconstruction of this movie, or just a very lengthy, I love the film and it's like this big of a review from like here to the screen. That's not really the case. It's pretty much, this is a little bit what the film is about, and... He gives a few little thoughts on it. Give a good example of it. For example, let's see, let's pick a good one. Well, a film that I enjoy as well as he did, I the Tiger, with Gary Busey. You know, that stuff at the bottom there is the synopsis of the plot. from there to the bottom and then that little paragraph here is his thoughts where he goes sweet, decap sweet decapitation amazing music off the hook explosions and a the theme to Rocky 3 used in another movie five years later you buy it individually from MGM or as a four action action four action pad movie marathon set that includes another vigilante revenge classic from 84 in this chapter called exterminator 2 either way this makes a dude movie night it rules And throughout the plot, he mentions the leader of the game is as intimidating as any bad guy could be. I would compare him to Night Slash and Stolen's Cobra, which was released the same year. Although I don't remember seeing Cobra in this book. He does reference it a few times, but I don't think he reviews Cobra. 961-207. Could be wrong. Yeah, he does reference it a few times. Like Beverly Hills Cop, he talks about Beverly Hills Cop and the section dealing with revenge mixed with a little bit of humor. And if you think about Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley was doing all that to get revenge for the his friend who was killed while he was knocked out. About how originally it was going to be Cobra, and Stallone was in it. And you have 61 and 207. 61 I talked about with Eye of the Tiger, and the other one, 9. Oh, that's what he mentioned about how uh, the introduction, how he really loves movies, and how he would go out in the woods and pretend he was Dutch and Predator, or sometimes he'd have a, a matchstick in his mouth, like Cobra. And it, it, you do really feel the love tonight. You do really feel the love that he has. Is that just a guy doing this for cash? Let's see. Every once in a while you get a little bit of a spelling mistake. Like for example when he talks about Seagull, he talks about urban justice. And the last bit is here. And then a picture from Machete. But yeah, my only complaint is Eddie Grant as a leader of the East Side Gang. He does his worst imitation of 1991 Nino Brown, Wesley Snipes throughout the film. His dialogue is a little carried away. I agree with him on that. Only I'm like, who the hell's Eddie Grant? That I actually looked on him to be. It's like I review that film. Who's? Oh, he meant Eddie Griffin. I'm not saying that to be a dick. It's just you know, little things I notice. 
But if I go through the book so that if people are ever interested what you're getting yourself into. And by what he mentioned, I hope you enjoy the book. Find a few films you may never have heard of. There were a few. Uh, one was a film called Deadbeat at Dawn, which I didn't know much about. But I, he, he really praised it. Saw some clips on YouTube and looked kind of looked kind of crazy, but in a fun way. Also, there was one with Ernest Borgnine called, I think Sunday. Let's see, I didn't I didn't find here when I see the picture. Sunday in the country, also known as Vengeance is Mine, with Ernest Borgnine and Michael J. Pollard. I'm like, Ernest Borgnine. I'm like, oh, people. But you have chapter one, settling the score, pushed too far, which is pretty cool because the first thing he tells about is when he first saw First Blood. And he pretty much goes through films. Whenever you read a book like this, there's always going to be stuff you disagree with, and that's just the way it is. I mean, unless you're writing the book yourself, there's always going to be stuff you disagree with. That's just... I know people go, well, that's common sense, but sometimes the common sense has to be said. Otherwise, people are like, what the fuck is that? Sometimes you gotta say the common sense shit in this day and age. Sometimes no shit Sherlock isn't enough for people. Like, for example, he mentions, like, Taken 2 is as awesome as the first one. I disagree. I, I hated that movie. On a side note, if people ask why, it's shit like... You know, get on the phone with your daughter. Hey, you need to find me. Throw some grenades off a rooftop. Okay, you're getting closer, and no one knows there's a fucking white girl in another country throwing fucking grenades off a fucking rooftop. Or, I have a phone, and three guys have guns on me, and I'm telling my daughter, go and hide over here. But none of them are going to do shit and take the phone from me. Anyway, but, uh, this is the thing, you're always going to dislike, I know he really enjoyed Machete, I know he really enjoyed Today You Die with Seagal. I did not, Today You Die is, I felt like I died when I watched that fucking movie. But again, anytime you go on a book like this, you're always going to have stuff you disagree with. But he goes into sort of the movies that deal a little bit with payback, so Army of One, a bit about Blind Fury, Columbiana, which he liked, but I, I hated Columbiana. Uh, of course, Commando, and let's see, Deadly Impact with Sean Patrick Flannery, and so forth. Kickboxer, nice thing of Lone Wolf McQuaid. Mask of Death, who learns Alamus. Again, this is a volume one, so it's not like he lied to people and said, This is the definitive. Like some things have done. <laughs> Honorable mentions, the cheesiest of the cheese. Once again, it's just one of those things I never liked the word cheesy. But I mean, it's his book and his preference, so that's fine. But I never care for the word cheesy. I'm one of those few guys that I love action movies. But like, I love these movies, but I don't think of them as cheesy. I think they're just badass and cool. And people would say I take them too seriously, but that's kind of the intention of these movies. I guess I love them for what they were intended for, not for cheesy. I, I never liked the word cheesy, I never used the word cheesy. I never describe a film as cheesy. If you look at my reviews, I never say cheesy either. I think it's a fun, good, solid action film. Like Commando, I think the one-liners are funny. I would never use the word cheesy. I'm like, they're they're badass and funny, and they're meant to be fun. So, again, it's all just a difference of... Uh, so subjective. But you toss about... Films on like Miami Connection, which I, it was a my cup of tea. No Holes Barred, Revenge, which I know Revenge, he really enjoyed. He felt it was one of director Tony Scott's best films. I feel it was one of Tony Scott's worst films because I thought it was insanely boring. 
Revenge. Like, I want to get revenge on the fucking DVD. I watched that one. But, uh... It's cool. He talks about films like The Glove with John Saxon, Star Trek II. Talks about vigilantes, and he tells a bit about his love for Charles Bronson, which is very cool. Not only of some of the Death Wish films, but stuff like The Evil That Men Do and Mr. Majestic. And that was fun to read. Some more films that deals a little bit with vigilanteism. For example, Combat Shock and Death Sentence with Kevin Bacon and Desperado with Stream Justice. Law Abiding Citizen. Sometimes he'll have like a quote from the film or maybe a tagline from the poster of the film. And like for Law Abiding Citizen, he has the a quote from the film, he has a little bit of the plot there at the top, and then at the bottom he gives a few thoughts as to So that's what I'm talking about. If you're looking for anything in depth, review wise or trivia wise, or I really enjoyed it for and then it's like a, you know, like how I go on like 30 minutes on one movie. Because I kind of want to be as in-depth as possible. But if you wrote a book like that, it would be like over a thousand pages and it'd only be volume one. So, But I'm just explaining that just so that people know what they're buying if they ever do. Uh, but he definitely has a... a Fun. I want. It's a sense of humor, but again, you can tell he loves it. Like for example, he says here, when there was a Bronson film airing on TV back in the '80s, you made sure you watched. And he has an advertisement for TV for a Bronson film. So there's fun stuff like that. Gives a little bit of a personality. <laughs> Reading a little bit about the Run DMC movie. Yes, there was a Run DMC action movie called Tougher Than Leather, which has the tagline, I shit you not, this time they've been pushed too far. Now someone else is going to dance to the music. <laughs> and he tells us a little bit about that film. So having films like this being referenced and pictures and the poster, that, was, that's, that brought a smile to my face. And he does stuff like 17 Lessons Learned from Revenge Films and the one-liner threats and what it taught me right from wrong. Number one, Thanks for the Rye Lady from Creep Show 2. He goes a little bit about what it's what the move what the scene was about. Lesson. Never leave the scene of an accident. Uh, number two, I want my two dollars from Better Off Dead. Lesson, pay your bills or else. Uh, Murdoch, I'm coming to get you. Lesson, never fuck over another person, let alone one who was trained to eat things that would make a Billy go puke. They have a line from Ben Richards, Arnold, and The Running Man. Lesson, never become a reality TV star. So, uh, one of my favorite parts was he talks about a lot of the Rambo ripoffs. And what, mainly like the... Like the Turkish ripoff, the the Turkish ripoff, the what was the other Italian ripoffs? He made some mention about the porno ripoffs. I kind of wish this was a bit longer. I thought he was going down, going to like the other movies that were released in the U.S. that actually ripped off Rambo, but some of them are th throughout like Thunder Raiders and such, but. It was this is a fun section to read. It's this and then some fun pictures. He has little interviews or with some folks like Martin Cove, Heather Lane Camp, Lance Henriksen. Uh, they're very short though. They're like for example, Martin Cove, he asked about a movie from 2007, The Dead Sleep Easy. 
He has a little bit about the Karate Kid. And he has a little bit about Rambo too. Mainly, were you pissed at Murdoch for making you and the other guy leave him behind? He's like, yeah, I really was. So you didn't feel that John Rambo was expendable? Be honest here. No, I didn't remember there was a backstory that never came out in the movie. It was he and I worked together in Vietnam. Then I turned mercenary and he became a member of society in the original First Blood. Then a little bit about... A little bit about Fred Williamson. No, he doesn't ask him about Steel Justice. But like, that's how long the interview is. So it's not really big in depth. If you're going in for that, you're going to be disappointed. Let's see. This is about deviants that got what was coming to them. So that's the section where you have I Spit on Your Grave, Last House on the Left, uh, Gutter Balls, which I absolutely fucking hated. It's one of the worst films I've seen. Hard Candy, which I did like. Yeah, I Spit on Your Grave, or Irreversible, Miss 45, Sun Impact. So I guess sort of the female persuasion, so to speak, getting the revenge. Then about sort of the samurai, like Shogun Assassin, as well as Kung Fu. So you have stuff like Enter the Dragon, Hard Boiled, Game of Death, go about the Street Fighter. Uh, Rikio, that's a fun one. Revenge of the Ninja, which is great. His buddy was part of like a. I just had read in the show Kazuki, and this is what he got back. So little additions like that make it fun. Some verses that he liked, like Conan versus Thulsa Doom, Simon Grew versus John McClane, Die Hard Three. And it sort of explains a little bit about the scene or the movie in question. A little section on Steven Seagal. Moves like above the law and out for justice. Hard to kill. Stuff in the Wild West. Moments of revenge that made him a bit sad. Like when Sam Elliott died in Roadhouse, uh, American History X, Godfather 3, among others. And then Revenge and Comedies, like Revenge of the Nerds. That's where like 48 Hours, Armed and Dangerous. And while I was talking about reviews, like for Armed and Dangerous, he talks about the plot of the film. Right? It's about, it's this little bit here and that little bit on top. So, it's probably this big. He has the plot of the film in two sentences. Then, to clear their names, they go on to travel with their employee's daughter, Maddie, to find out who the real culprits are and the deal of revenge for setting them up. Pretty much his review. While this isn't as strong as some of Candy's later classics, it's still quite funny. Candy and Levy make a great comedy team. That's pretty much all that's said. So that's what I mean. It depends if you're what kind of review you're looking for. I mean, he's pretty much simple, straight to the point, uh, fairly short. I don't know if some people may think there'd be no purpose to having a book like this because you know, the way of the internet and you know you can find all this stuff out on IMDb and user reviews and all that stuff but you know it's nice to have something physical in your hands and it, even as as a butcher to flip through and look at the pictures is nice like Danny DeVito the ratings game which I've heard of I haven't seen that one Little interview with Lance Hammerson where he tells a little bit about Stone Cold and the Tales from the Crypt episode that he was in, two of them. Uh, 
a little bit of comic book movies. Kind of weird that the Fantastic Four in 1994 is talked about. For quite a bit. And I thought that was kind of weird for a movie about revenge. You know, you have a book like this, and then like a whole page and such are to the 1994 Fantastic Four film. So, I mean, there's some little things like that. It's like, oh, okay, it's. I don't even know. I don't remember what it was about that stream revenge. I mean, I guess Doctor Doom wants revenge for what was done to him, but and then there's like movies that he just briefly mentions or just references. And like I say, a little bit of horror films. And he mentions Friday the 13th, mentions Sleepaway Camp. I thought this was cool, seeing all the different covers for Sleepaway Camp films. So that's what I mean, little stuff like that makes this a fun book. But again, it's, it's kind of hard to judge it because I didn't pay for it. Because it was sent to me for free, so... How would I have felt if I paid 15 bucks plus 4 bucks shipping, so about 20 bucks for this? I, I don't know. A little interview with Heather Langen Camp. And when I mean short, it's pretty much this long. I mean, I'm just showing people, you know, what you're getting. If you do get it. Revenge that deals with machines or machinery, like the Wraith. Choppy Mall, a little bit. Evil Speak. A little bit on the car. That was funny you mentioned Tank with James Garner. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. I remember. Uh, see Thomas Howell. Steal. It's like they arrested his son, and James Garner's like, fuck this, and gets in a tank and says, You better get my son out of jail. I'm going to show the Sherman tank up your ass. He didn't say that line, but it'd be great if. But uh, I haven't, God, I haven't seen them forever. And you know, any whenever you mention Rolling Vengeance, this will bring a smile to my face because that's another one I remember as a kid. It's hard to find, but it's worth tracking down. Joey Ru Rosso builds the beast of a truck with a flamethrower that you revenge on the guys who killed his family and raped his girlfriend. So I think really this is what you would call a reference guide. Where if you don't know much about revenge films, and you're like, hmm, what are some I can look up? Hey, there, that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. And I think that's the best way to approach this is this is a fairly decent reference guide for stuff dealing with revenge. And I didn't he didn't lie to people and say this was all of them. This is a volume one. But anyway, if if the Danny is watching, sorry, that's thirty minutes long. I'm, Again, I'm not really, I've really been experienced reviewing books. I pretty much just sit here and talk for a long time. But I hope the book is doing well for you. Congrats on getting a book made. Um, I thought it was an okay book. It was one of those where, you know, I heard about a lot of the stuff. But it was fun to read someone else's point of view on it. A lot of nice pictures. Interviews are very pretty quick, pretty short. Similar reviews are kind of like one or two word, two word, one or two sentence reviews. And of course, like any book, there's always going to be stuff you disagree with the other person because that's just how it is with books like this. A few little 
spelling issues. But it's nice that there's a it goes through the group of genres, whether a little bit more of horror, a little bit more of western, a little bit even superhero, which kind of surprised by a little bit of comedy, a little bit of just action, and some Seagull and Rambo ripoff thrown in there. So Yeah, pretty decent little book. So to Danny, thanks for sending this to me. It was fun to read. But again, I don't know if if I had paid twenty bucks for this. I don't know. I don't know, but still, it's not like it's a short little book. Uh, I'm I'm running out of steam here. It was a decent book. I don't people like, oh man, you're trying hard not to rant on. No, it's really nothing to rant about. It's just, are you interested in the subject matter or not? I mean, do some of the movies interest me? No. I mean, movies like I Spit on Your Grave, movies like Cannibal Holocaust, movies like that stuff are not going to interest me. among some of the other stuff but at the same time it was cool to read a little bit about you know dead beat at dawn never heard about that one the one with you know a little bit of the blastportation as a blastportation section that was fun to read you know things of that nature so either way thanks for watching the video sorry for so long but You can find it on Amazon if you want. If not, no worries. Believe me, it doesn't matter to me anyway. It's not my book, but it was fun to read. And Danny, thanks for sending it to me. And he didn't have to do that. It was definitely a surprise, but thank you. So those are my thoughts on the mega book of Revenge Films, Volume 1, The Big Payback. And we'll see you with some more John Candy reviews. Later.